guys, I don't really know what I'm doing here. It's freezing, it's cold. Dear, oh dear, there's frost everywhere, but it's a beautiful blue sky, high pressure system. We've had so much rain, I've got to give it a go. I'm here at Rockbourne Trout Fishery in Hampshire. They've got something like eight different species of trout you can catch here on a fly rod. I'm here, Steve Perry is here, who's a top shore guy, and he is going around trying to catch, wait for this, Arctic char. Now, I feel that's very fitting because the temperature is very arctic. It's going to warm up a little bit, not a great deal, but it is a stunning day today here at Rockbourne. Going to go around and I might even cook one of these if I can catch one. So I'm going around with Steve. Steve is after the biggest one on the lake. They reckon it's about seven pounds, this arctic char. And they get other species, spark tick, they get brown trout, they get rainbow trout, they get Dameron blue. Uh, what else do they get? Those golden trout. Loads of them. There's guys turning up all the time here. It's a Sunday, it's busy. Everybody's looking for fish because you can spot them. It's so clear here. So the best thing I could do is tackle up before all these people catch all the trout in front of me. Guys, I'm going to use a head cam for a lot of it. Wish me luck and I'll see if I can catch one. If I don't, Steve's that good. Pretty sure he'll come up with something. So first thing I want to do people is keep my hands warm. So what I'm going to be using is one of these charcoal sticks in a little hand warmer and get that going. It's cold, tell me my breath. It's cold. It's going to warm up. It's going to be a lovely, lovely day. I'll just get that going there like this. I'll put that inside here, close it up, that's my hand warmer, and then if I'm fishing with my left hand side here, I can actually tuck that inside my glove here, keep warm and I can still strip the line. So that's what I'm going to do to keep my hands circulating. Looking for different uh, species of trout, I'm walking around and I haven't got a cap on because I've got the camera on, so I can't really see anything. And the light is so low and it's dark. I and mean, when I come here before, it's generally gene clear. Well, it is gene clear. It's very, very dark, and I have not seen a fish. And there's plenty in here. Very, very difficult. I'm told that these uh, Arctic char are around the edges, so I'm just going to have a walk around. They've got a small stream there as well that feeds all the ponds. You can see through there, plenty of water going through this this time of year and in the summer it's very low. It's all sheltered with wood and just basically walking around the edges looking. You're waiting in the winter for the sun to get up high so between 11 and about 1 might be a good time to take a look. Just come around to see Steve, see how Steve's doing. I'll take this one off. So what are you seeing Steve? See anything? I've seen plenty of char today. They, um... They seem to be really finicky though, I'm not sure why. They, yeah. um, I think they've been a little bit spooked. There's a couple of other people who are targeting them today. Yeah, it looks like people are looking for them, aren't they? Yeah, looking yeah, for the species, I, I, yeah. I think it's kind of moved them off a little bit. So what are you on? Let me come around this side to get the light right. At the moment. What, what, got... tell, tell everybody what you've got fly rods, reels and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh, reel wise, just a little um, little max catch. I think it's a free weight, I think, that real. And yeah. Just a little Shakespeare Odyssey fly. I've had this for years. What's that, about four, four weight yeah, or something four, like that? Yeah, a little four weight. I, um, I did have a two weight, but I actually broke that on a double figure <laughs> fish up here not long ago. Oh, like, tip went when I was bringing it to the net. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice, nice little light setup. Sort of six pound fluoro. And a, at the moment, I've got a, like a Montana on with a yeah, bright bead orange head. tail. Yeah, a little bead head. So I'll get it down, tail. yeah. Just to. Um, now, I've got trouble seeing the fish. I've only just turned up. So. You're saying they're mostly around the margins, these char, are they? The, yeah, the char are. It's, it's peculiar. When they first go in, they seem to find a little spot and they hold in the middle for a day or two and then they just start to venture in the margins and you'll see them right under your feet. Do they right cruise or are they statics? You know, sometimes no, they, they're pretty static. much always cruising. Um, sometimes they'll sit in a, in, a, in a group, but they're not sort of sat. They, um, they're sort of constantly moving. Yeah, yeah. Always yeah. moving in, in, in a sort of circle. Well, I suppose the best time for spotting is going to be the next... 11 to 1, something like that, when the sun's up high. Yeah, it's just coming over the tree line there now. So. Yeah, it's tough. I find it tough anyway for me. Yeah. My eyes looking, yeah. but <laughs> you're just going to keep walking around and 
Um, yeah, looking for, you're looking for the fish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know where there's, there's been quite a few up in that top corner. Sure. Some down underneath them, look at that canopy there and in, in this margin here where the swan is there, up in, along this corner seems to be their little patrol areas. Yeah. But there's um, the, the big girls in the margins up there all the time at the moment she is she oh you can see it cruising oh, up yeah, there yeah, i can yeah, see yeah. i can see anglers cruising up and down really yeah. well. <laughs> chasing her up and down the margin yeah so that's a, that's a what sort of size do you think that one is see? i reckon it's seven eight pound oh it's a good Got fish a yeah, yeah, yeah it dwarfs the whole shoal oh whole really fish. totally yeah. different yeah. yeah yeah she's a, she's a big girl right. oh well i think it's because somebody catches one and if yeah. not i should be off chasing a rainbow yeah <laughs> well, they're not No idea what it is. I saw well it's a fish, obviously a fish. I saw a bunch of uh, trout. There, get me a net. There was fish. Just right under that bush. I had to do a sideways cast to get in there. I don't know what it is, it might just be a rainbow. Which we'll take it because we can uh, have a cook up with that. Yes or Barely the shape of the fish. I think it's a rainbow, but it looks like they were either I don't know whether the browns in amongst them or not. But it's a fish. I'll take a fish any time, boys. Where's that net, Smith? Where's the net, Smith? Wow, he's going now. I think it's a rainbow. Oh, he's got that head shape that he might ping off. Oh dear, 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 dear. Now normally the other fish, brook trout and chars and stuff, got a white leading edge to their fins. And I don't see it on this one. I've got to watch my rod going up in that bush. Top of the tree. So I'm guessing this is Mr. Rainbow. It's certainly going well. This is cold water fishing. They do scrap one in cold water. Watch that right top. Here we go, here we go. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, you can do it. You can. It's a rainbow, boys. Nice rainbow. Oh, yes, <laughs> We've, we've saved the blank again, oh my god. I don't know what we got of that. Little black fly, I'll bang him on the head, or put him to bye-byes, and then I'll show him to you. Well, there we go, people. Really nice. rock born rainbow. I thought it was going to be an arctic char. Got a nice tail on that one. Super looking fish, good condition, winter condition. Never know. Hopefully Steve will come up and he's got one of those char. Fingers crossed anyway. Okay guys, bunch of fish, bunch of fish there now. Absolute mega bunch. I'm going to creep down here. Crouch, crouch, crouch. Look at that man creeping in the bushes there. So stupid at his age. Wow, they were spooky. They were spooky. Big time spooky. No, they spooked off the whole shoals on there. The plus side is you want the sun behind you, like I've got here, so that you can see the fish, you know. The downside is because it's going down so low, it throws a very long shadow here. Look at my shadow on the board here. 
So by the time I walk out there, you can actually see my shadow extending out onto the water. Look, I've got no choice because if I, if I don't go to the end, I'm never going to see the fish. But anything in here is probably liable to spook. So you can see even, even looking at the shadow there, look, you can see my arm move, everything. Just like this, look, if you watch the shadow, the fish aren't, they're stupid, but not that stupid. So this wouldn't be a good area for me to target, I feel. Maybe look around the trees, there's a big bonfire down there, they're burning off, they might have cleared out, so have a look around there. But what a peach of a day. If somewhat cold. Well guys, it is, it's quarter to one, that's 45 minutes. And in that 45 minutes from midday until now, now that light has changed, that has dropped behind me there. It's going down behind those trees. I am thinking I'm on a one fish wonder. I think it's gonna be it. I'm not gonna be able to see these fish. Steve can still see them, but I just can't. There's just very, very few areas. I'm putting a bit of washing up liquid on this just here on the on the leader just to get it down so that when I do see a fish and cast at it it goes it cuts through the surface film and then sinks quicker and I can retrieve quicker because I've got a very limited time that I actually see the fish and can cast to it it's not like the summer where you've got plenty of time to see the fish where it's coming and where it's going and they're moving a lot so you're like now I've got a lot of trouble because I've got the head cam on here up here so I haven't got a peak cap on to shut that glare down. That would make a huge difference. So I am at a disadvantage by not being able to put my, a peak cap on. I say I'm at a disadvantage. I, to, I call it more an excuse, wouldn't you? But I'm still looking and looking. I don't want to go blind casting because I really would like to target something different. But I think in all fairness, I might, might be stuffed. You can fish away, you're going to catch trout, but the thing is, if there's a variety of trout in different species here, and that's what people come to Rockburn for, is different types of trout. It's like sort of collectors, really. It's nice to catch something different. No, I don't see anything now, it's weird. That's fishing, it changes, it changes all the time. Right, I think I have to move again. I've just seen something through here. I can see the bubbles and I can see the concentric rings going around. I wonder if those fish from up there have moved up here. No reason why not. Yes, there's a fish over there. Two, two fish. Okay, guys. Game on again. Just while I've got a little bit of light left, I might, might still get one fish out of this. Same fly, just a little nymphy thing. I'm going to use this trout. Oh, uh, this trout? That's a trout. This tree is a screen from the trout. And hopefully, oh yeah, I see a few fish. But they did seem spooky, and there's other line. Ah, oh, yeah, see them all. See the ripples, people? They're spooky, all right. And there's been a lot of other guys trying it here. Looks like I see bits of line hanging down. The problem being, if I snag their line, I'm in it as well. I can avoid the tree, but I don't know how far down their line's coming. I think I might be living dangerously here. Oh, come on. Wowee, that was a move. Just by, all that was was seeing a few bubbles and a concentric ring swinging, swinging around here. It'd be nice if we got that one on camera, wouldn't it? Probably, probably a rainbow. But listen, 
Notice how close I need to leave the net. We have a camera up as well, I've got a feeling that's going to fall over if I'm not careful. See what you have to do making these films. Working alone, playing a fish. Zooming in, getting the right setting. Generally, generally nearly losing the fish. In fact, I have done many, many times. I don't think it's a, a cheat, it's probably a rainbow. Listen, I'll take everything I can get. Oh, look at this, look at the, look, look, just look at the state I'm in. Look, look, what is it about? Just a walking disaster. Oh, <laughs> you gotta love it, haven't you? Um, what's the word? I think it begins with F. I think it begins with F. How do you spell it? Wonderful. That's messing with the camera, guys. That's trying to get you people in there with some action shots. Cost me a fish. I just see a few light shapes out there. They might there might still be a chance of a fish. There he is. That was lucky. I just saw that light coloured shape. Now this one I've got to mess around with the other camera. Leave the other camera, Graham. Let's go with the one I've got. Super against that blue sky, look at that. Bound to be a rainbow. Oh yeah, come on fish, come on fish. Come on fish. Come on fish. Trout rods are really quite ungainly rods to play fish with, really. Because the reel's down the bottom here, you've got no foregrip here. That you can rest your forearm on, sorry. Got the four whips there, Graham. A bit more power left in him. Well, well, well. Fortune favours the brave. Really, I should have approached those fish from over there and cast long ways to them rather than risk snagging that other guy's line. Hopefully. Now, watch this. Watch me lose this fish as I put the camera on. Here we go. Oh, he woke up there, didn't he? He woke up then. He woke up. <laughs> Gotta watch this piece of branch don't go in the net. Let's get some dingo. Here he comes. He's in. Perhaps not quite as big as the first, but still a nice fish. Lovely group of them there. I was Short casting up there under that tree. I'd look over the trees there. Oh no! Oh no! 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 no. <laughs> He's come out. He's out, is he? <laughs> yeah, boys, it would have been. It was an Arctic char. <laughs> it was an Arctic char. <laughs> Who would believe you? Oh, he's going straight in the end. Look at that. Is that because they like the edges? You think? I'm not sure. He's just. 
probably. I said they do like to hang around the margin. There's a lovely group of fish, there were around 20 of them. Really? And they were yeah. holding this same fish. I actually missed this fish four times on the trot. Really? Yeah. It come up, inhaled the fly, and I don't know why, but the hook didn't set. But this, this time, it. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of fish in that lake, and I was looking at the ones with the white fins. Yeah, probably and, uh, I got, uh, and they probably were char. They were going around in a little school. Yeah, they're probably spark ticks, to be fair. Oh, really? Yeah. And then a rainbow got it. You know, oh, so. really? Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't see. <laughs> I told you what my glasses and eyes are like. So yeah. I just saw a white mouth. It could have been anything. It's getting a, yeah, you get yeah, a strike, yeah. you know. You get a flash, don't you? Isn't it? You just lift into it automatically, really. Yeah. They do want to go in the weeds. Yeah, see that? Look. Yeah. Look at that, boys. Watch that if you hook one. Definitely want to get in the margin, so like a good. bloody chub going for a snag or something. <laughs> too late, he's in. Nice one too. That's quite a nice chub. Yes, yeah, quite a nice one that one, yeah. So that's your bug, little bug there, yeah? yeah little um, white and orange stalking bug. That's sun. Yeah. Beautiful colours on it. So they are a cracking fish. Really Lots and lots of dots on them too, aren't they? Those yeah, white dots. They're covered in dots. I said the, the spark ticks, they, um, they've got the white dots. Yeah. I said, if we can find one, we'll try to put one up in a little bit. They, um, they've got the white dots as well as bright red. Yeah. Which they've picked up from the brookie. Obviously, where they're brook trout char cross, they've got the white of the char and they've got the, um, the brook trout red spots. And if people are spotting, they can look for these leading the edges of edges. white on the fins. Yeah. On the edge of all those fins, they see that white. Leading edge, fish. even on the bottom of the tail fin, actually. Yeah, they're quite easy to sort of distinguish to spot. Yeah, for you. <laughs> Here they are again. A massive group come back in again. <laughs> well done, good fish. Oh, yeah, good fish coming out now. Steve, you think that's a lot of the fact that some people can actually see them to target yeah, them? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's like yourself, Graham, when you're on the on the lakes. I say, like stood here now. If you didn't have that sunlight penetrating the, the surface film. And, You'd never be able to see those char there. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd char be fishing there. blind all the time, wouldn't you? You would be, yeah. yeah you yeah, couldn't yeah, target yeah. the species exactly you want. That. You just have to fish blind and hope, really, if you if you come up on a windy, sort of wet day, grey day. That sunlight, though, is lovely today. Cutting that glare out beautifully. All right, I'm off the other lake. You're going to stick yeah. on this one now? Uh, I might have a little wander now. I've had a char on. Yeah. I might try and find a spark. You well, know. have a look under that tree up there, because there's a bunch of fish here. The big char on guys. It's big. It's big. I don't even waking up too much. Yeah, it's a big fish. This is fish of the day if I can get it in. It's just one shot I had of the sunlight behind me. Steve's coming around here. Might want a bigger net, Steve. He's certainly pulling his weight, this kitty. He's just in the, in the top of the roof of the mouth. Mind you. Got her is not the word, is it? No. Is your net any bigger than mine? Uh, is yours yeah, bigger than mine? Yes, that Steve's got a bigger net if I get that close. Oh, oh get in! Yeah. That was. Hey! Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm no good if I can't see them, Steve. I'm alright when I can see fish. <laughs> I can't see. I only saw them now, up and down, up and down, up and down. So I thought, well, okay, now. I feel really bad, really. All you guys targeting them, and I've just gone. Oh, oh that's on that great big. Isn't it? No, yeah. oh no, that's that's oh my god. He's a beauty. Yeah, because I guess it would be a fast take. That's that's that is a nice fish, isn't it? Yeah, how am I? Look at those markings on it, boys. And there you can see the white leading fins and stuff. Look at that for a child. What a beautiful fish. 
I don't like holding another man's fish, but when it looks like that. No, no, but at least I can get it filmed, I, can get, I know yeah. what I'm getting. Look at, that, Look at the white edging on the fins on that as well. I don't like holding another man's fish, but when it looks like that. No, no, but at least I can get it filmed, I, can get, I know yeah. what I'm getting. Look at that, eh? Look at the white edging on the fins on that as well. It just shows you not, not to give up, doesn't it? You know, if no, you've gone exactly what well, right. I know that because I've done fish before, but yeah, you know, I mean, I would have written that one off because everybody's been targeting it, but it's yeah. the first real shot I've had at him down there, so it's, it's and there was a, there's several of them there. It's refused every fly I've put in front of it today, anyway. Yeah, it? yeah. I had one little look a couple of times earlier, sort of dropped on the fly and turned away. And well, you think it, when they're like that, you'd normally think they take a small fly, I would have thought, yeah. a real, real small, because they've yeah, been targeted with everything. But yeah, I thought I did a and black and bug earlier on in that video. Yeah, what a magnificent fish, eh? Damn. Lovely. Cracking up to char. Beautiful. What we got here? We have a... This um, is the spark tech. Spark tech. Oh. So that's got yeah. similar dots to it. Yeah. And then we yeah. should have put the three together. Can we lay yeah, them on the grass? That green of that grass. And I'll put this old rainbow in there. Yeah, what a beautiful Arctic char. Look at the size of that. You can see the difference between the two, can't you? You've got the So the spark tick, this cross. one, is a yeah. cross between... Is it an a, Arctic char? A, and a, a brook and a brown? Is and it? a brook trout. No, it's a cross between an Arctic char and a brook trout. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah you can see the, um, the Arctic char white dots. And then the pink... I don't know if you can focus in on those pink very yeah, well. Just very, here. Very bright pink, yeah. I can zoom in on those, yeah. Yeah, the brook So you don't have the red dots on these then? Nope, no red dots on the on the big child. But yeah, you've got the beautiful white edge into the fins. You can pick that up very well. And then as per the normal, which most people would go, is there's your rainbow trout with the rainbow going down the side. You're not going home, guys, because I want a brown trout now. <laughs> <laughs> Guy. <laughs> Absolute giant of a, of a Arctic char here. Really, really lucky, lucky to get it. But listen, hopefully I got it on camera for you guys. This is what you come to Rockbourne for. Fish like this, eight different species I think they got in here. By the time I get home, you'll probably have nine. <laughs> you'll, you'll invent another one. Well, that's good, it'd give me an excuse to come back, wouldn't it? Well, you had to come back for those big spartics. Oh no, that's it. We got a photograph of one there. We didn't. We got one. No, yeah, well, we got we got them like that. Oh really? We're waiting for them to get to double. Great fish, guys. Get your fly rod. Get down here, even in the winter. And who was it was complaining this morning all about that cold? Yeah, me. <laughs> I'm going to go for a six twelve. I'm going to be. Conservative, yeah. I mean, it looks fat, but I know most fish when you yeah. you get excited about something, you think, oh, that's a really big whatever, you know, and you weigh it and you go, oh, it's not. <laughs> really? You think it's big, yeah? You might go seven, I don't know. We're going to weigh this one, guys. Let's see what she goes. What did I tell you? She's eight on the nose. No, really, I'm amazed. Yeah. Eight pounds, yeah. That's what you said seven to eight when you saw it in the water, didn't you? I say 6.14 because I thought, I don't want to be disappointed that it might go seven, seven and a quarter, but that, eight pounds. Sort of scales, beautiful fish. Very lucky to get a shot of that. Steve knew I wanted to sample one of these for eating, so he actually gave me a fillet of his own char for trying. Have you tried trout? Like this meat off the shore, Steve. You must have had a uh, crack at some yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I've had congers and loads of stuff in the boats, but yeah, no, my, my brother was actually using it last night um, on the last trip we had up here. Yeah, and he used it last night and had a couple of congers on it. Oh, oh, so they're good, good. Well, it's all oil in it, isn't it? So it's got to be good. Yeah, yeah so there's a lot, probably a lot of blood content in the, in the cavity. I'm not sure why. Then I can skin it at home and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, mess yeah, around yeah. with it. Yeah, as you can see, it's um. It's quite a firm. Yeah, it's not like nice a red meat, is it? Is it? It's a lighter coloured meat yeah, altogether. Yeah, it's quite pinky. I'm not sure if that's a. So they're not going to do curry with that. So I would, I'm going to trim that fat off about there. You think there? Yeah, Come along there definitely. and use the back meat. Trim that edge off. Take that fin off. Like I said, there's a line of pin bones you always get down the centre. Yeah. I'd V cut that out straight down the centre there. And remove those bones and then yeah, yeah you're good to go. You've got some loin section. Lovely job. Top and bottom. So there we go, guys. Arctic char. A curry, curried Arctic char. We're going to have. Right guys, I think you'll agree that was a really classy bit of fly fishing. Really ended up enjoying that really. 
even though it's really cold. Now you've seen Steve give us a superb fillet here. Look at the size he's given us a fillet of one of the fish there. It's one that he caught char. And we're going to have this, and I've never eaten char before, I've got to tell you, I've never eaten it before. All I've done is come in and put it on the board, but I am going to take the skin off there. So I'm going to lay it down on here, and fingers crossed, we'll tidy it up a little bit. Run along the skin like this. Probably seen it in other cooking programs we've done. In fact, what I'm going to do is lose that bit of meat along there. Well, it's not really meat, that's the belly cavity. So we're going to cut that off. Thought this knife was sharp. Discard that little piece there and then just run the finishing knife along the back there. So we're basically taking it off that skin. We don't want the skin. We're looking for like cubes of meat, really. Come on, nearly off. Okay. And there you can see, there's the skin. Put that to a side. Now, what Steve was telling me, you can pull these bones out. I think I've seen Wayne do that. These bones are they're always along there. He goes in a V shape and cuts a wedge out there to get rid of most of those bones and then make cubes of the meat that's left. So say you wait while I do all that, I'm going to do this here somewhere prepared earlier. So I'm now just cubing these up into like, we're going to call them chefy goujons like that. Now this, when I looked it up about these arctic char, they say they're really good and the guys told me, Steve and uh, Peter, the fishery owner said this is really firm meat lighter colour than a rainbow trout and it's also very high in fat content it's equal apparently to the sockeye salmon I expect you've heard of the sockeye salmon they're normally the ones that uh, you see the bears grabbing you know when they're leaping up waterfalls and stuff like that so they know that there's a lot of fat in these just using sunflower oil here gonna be a good good old glug in there because it's got a it's got a curry curry going in there I think that might be enough. Right, I'm going to get some uh, regular flour in there. I'm going to sieve it off a bit just to make my uh, curry batter. And apparently, I'm told sieving actually does make it a bit better, especially if you sieve it all over the counter. So, hopefully, the wife forgives me for that. There we go. Into that, we're going to put a tablespoon of oil there or thereabouts a little tab more going in there but does it matter we'll find out later into that we're going to put our curry powder a good bit depending on what you wish this is medium this is only medium a good heap teaspoon and a bit extra by the look of it curry powder in there I would have liked a dark ale but this razorback says and it must be true an exceptionally what's that say refreshing amber craft Ale. So, first thing I'll do is just test it. Oh, lovely. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Just going to add a little bit at a time. Just whisking it in as we go. Just to make this uh, sort of paste up, really. I'm just hoping the whole bottle doesn't go in here, because it'd be a shame to put it all in, wouldn't it? And just make batter out of it. Just whisk that till you get a nice creamy texture. Right, so you get these goujons and just give them a dip in the flour and they tell me that stops the batter running off. It just lets it bond to it a little bit more. And if it's all wet, juicy pieces of fish, then the batter is gonna slide straight off. So this way it makes it grip a little bit better. Into the frying pan. Here we go, a little bit of cooking oil. A knob of butter. We've got the cooking oil on the go over here. Just to check. Now Wayne gave me a tip here. Our resident fish cook, Wayne Combin, who's really, really good at fish, uh, fishing and cooking, put a little piece of bread in there and that will tell you if that's hot enough, if it does actually sort of go golden. Right, you can just see that butter's melting away nicely. 
I'm just going to drop a piece of bread into that and see if it does sizzle up. That looks hot enough to me, guys. So what we've got here are just tin potatoes. We're going to do our own form of chips. They're all going to go in there. And of course you can cook these and do boiled potatoes, slice them up yourself, or you can just do what we're doing. That's a nasty one there we've been sold. If you want to get the temperature of on a frying pan, just put the lid over it and just keep an eye on it. You can see that's going. I'm just going to put a little sprinkle of the garlic across there, just to give them a little bit of pizzazz. Back to the batter, a bit of salt and pepper. It's going to go amiss. Look, you can see there how well that sticks to the fish. Really well. And that's what we're going to do, get those all in if we can, in one go. The chips are just starting to go um, a little bit golden brown. One of the benefits, of course, if you are doing beer battered fish of any description is the receptacle into which you have extracted the alcohol is large enough to give you some left over. Don't buy a small bottle, buy a big bottle and then you get that as well as a bonus. We're not far away people. So we just put it on a paper towel to start with. Just let that drain off and then you can transfer to other serving dishes. Food fit for a king. That's an Arctic char, curried, batter, beer, spices, whatever you want to put in there guys, it's there.